Hey, good morning. Um, I'm gonna make a part here, and I figured I'd kind of make a video on it. I've already kind of done the basic uh, setup for it, um, but I want to show you how I got there. So, working on this 210 here, gear up landing, um, I found a donor fuselage, and uh, got about 95% of the parts that I need out of it. Um, but, there's one frame that I wasn't really happy with, uh, so I'm going to make a new one. They don't have them available with uh, Cessna, and so I'm going to make it. So here's the original one. You can see there's some pretty significant damage. This is one that I already flattened out, so you can see the curve that's missing on it, right? Um, it's a small bulkhead, pretty simple. Uh, it's 32 thousandths uh, T3 and has a couple holes for wires and fuel lines and brake lines and what have you. And then it's riveted to the outside skin and to the floorboard and to the, the laundry on that goes uh, forward and aft. So this is something that you would see underneath the floorboard. Uh, so what I did is, this is the one from the donor and you can see that there's already been a gear up repair on the donor one too where these holes are gargantuan, they're almost a 3 16 hole where they had Cherry Max in them. They literally did the whole repair with Cherry Max, which is very disturbing to me. It, I don't know why people use them like they're uh, going out of style, but it's, it's too unfortunate that we had to do that. So there are the other frames that do have the larger holes in them but this one was kind of crunched in the corner, cracked a little bit, and it was also had a little bit of scuffing um, from the previous repair. And then whenever they did the drill outs, there was some very deep drill marks in them and some chafing. So what I did is I prepared a form block to hammer out a new one. I used to do this in my past life when I worked for a different company and uh, I worked for a guy down in California and he taught me how to do this. I made one little frame which really opened up a, a world to me on how to make parts because I didn't know how they were made. So I'm going to use this one as a flat pattern. You'll see here in a minute. Um, but here's my form block. So what I did before I flattened this one out, I used that to create my hammer block. And I'll take these bolts out here that's holding this together. There's a couple parts to this uh, forming that you need to take into consideration when you're doing this. And this is just a MDF, real thick uh, high density fiberboard. Uh, works really good, um, takes the impact well. It's good for one off if you're gonna make a whole bunch of parts. Um, there's a few other things to consider when you do that to, to make them so they last longer. But for one-off pieces, it's great. So I took the this piece here before I flattened it out and I put it on the MDF. Kind of like this. It's a little taco here from flattening it out. But anyway, the, the flanges were faced up and actually down. Um, I would, I actually had it on the back side, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Had it like this, and I took a, a Sharpie, and I, a little bit of an angle, went all the way around, and then I cut it out with a bandsaw, and I set up a uh, 10 degree on my um, flatten on my sander. So I took 10 degrees off of that for spring back on all the, the forming sides. Now I could take and go on my brake and break these two edges since they're nice and straight, but we'll just do it all at the same time on the form block. And then that way it's the exact same size as the form block. Um, with the new flat pattern though, the only holes I'm gonna drill is this one here. And then I'll drill the center of this one as a number 10 
or 3 16 hole to fit over the bolts. So you can see I have some, some scallops in here for the shrinking. So because when this is going to get folded over, the material has some place to go. So you put these little scarfs in here and they actually were in the factory. You put the little scallops in there and then that metal goes into that and then that helps keep this edge somewhat straight. If I have to, I'll put this in my shrinker and I have a little kick shrinker that I can take and bump it uh, ever so slightly uh, to, to bring this whole edge here so it's nice and flat. But we'll adjust that as we go. And then there's uh, a couple joggles in here. I got one here, one here in the center, and then one here on the end. And this is and one here on the top. So there's actually four of them. Uh, so there's a stringer here. Uh, I believe there's a stringer there. And then there's the lingeron that fits right here. So it'll actually capture as a demonstration. It'll capture it like this. So it has space for those uh, lips or flanges to be, and then a rivet goes through all that. So then the other part of it is the top block. You can't just put a piece of metal on here like this and then bend it over. I mean, you could, but you'll result in this big bowing. It'll just kind of ripple over. So what we need to do is take this top one, and you can make this out of Again, you can make it out of MDF like I did, or you can make it out of a piece of steel plate, which also is good, or aluminum. And then this all gets bolted together. These are more or less alignment pins, but it also will pull this together. And then I'll stick this in the vise, and then I'll pound this flange right over into here, taking up these scallops and these, these uh, uh, joggles so it, it has a nice formed piece to it. And it will be just like the original uh, piece that came out of the airplane. And we'll be able to install it with nice fresh holes. We'll primer it and Bob's your uncle. So let's get started. I will make my flat pattern. do before I get too far is I want to put a washer. I just used AN3 bolts and some 960 and 970 washers. That way you got a good surface area here. You can use regular um, hardware store stuff. It doesn't have to be aircraft, but it, it helps. These are nice and strong and they're readily available in my bin, so that's what I used. So to flatten this out, I just took my trusty body hammer and went on a nice flat surface and pounded it out all the way around and then I took it in my uh, English wheel and set it tight enough that I could roll the, the little edges out here that get formed over when it gets bent and this had a little tiny flange here and you can see this corrosion so we're getting rid of some cracks some oversized holes some corrosion and other stuff in here and make it a nice new clean shiny piece of aluminum um, fortunately this is the perfect size it's the uh, um, 032 2024 t3 and you can see that the grain of the metal is this way which is fine I don't really have enough I mean I could make it this way but then that kind of sets you up you have a little bit of um, cross action with the green here but it'll be really straight with this so what we're going to do is we're going to clock the piece this way so it'll go across the bend all the way around except for maybe in a couple spots it'll be a little little less um, straight or parallel I should say um, but you just try to get the most of it. You know, this is going to be almost a 45 here, 45 here on this one. This one's going to be a little straight, maybe 10 degrees here and then up to about 45. So 45 to 30 to 20 to 10, 
So we'll get a little action in the straight area right here, which hopefully it won't make too much of a difference. But what we'll do is we're gonna draw around the perimeter and then I'm gonna draw in this hole here and then find the center of it, find the center of that, and then we'll get it all clicoed in there and then we'll draw all the little holes just to have them as a visual. We'll cut out this, deburr everything really good, nice and smooth. I'll cut out this little relief here for the angle that goes through there. And once that's all done, I'll clean it up and make sure it's completely deburred and super, super smooth. And then we'll put it in the form block and we'll bust it over. So stand by and I'll show you the result.